SNP spokesperson Deirdre Brock. Thank you, Thank you. Madam Deputy Speaker. Uh, it's always revealing to hear the Leader of the House express her increasingly outlandish views of Scotland every Thursday morning, and I expect today will be no different. Her efforts last week, though, had the feel of a kind of fever dream as she treated us to her thoughts on Mary Queen of Scots, the Highland Clearances and the Hundred Years' War, all in some sort of answer to my comments about Scotland's remarkable progress on child poverty. Goodness knows what we'll get this week, Madam Deputy Speaker, although, once again, I will gently remind the Leader of the House that business questions is for members of this House to ask about her government and her government's policies. We all understand the difficulties of defending this tired, hollowed-out bunch on its last legs, but that's her job, for the moment anyway. Now, I wonder, given her claim to have a keen interest in events north of the border, if she's had a chance to look at the IPPR think tank report on the State of the Union. It suggests that the kind of belligerent, muscular unionism we see on display from her Tory benches is now utterly counterproductive, and not just on Thursday mornings, but day in, day out. This report highlights the brittle and contemptuous approach of Westminster to Scotland and its people. Professor uh, Richard Wynne-Jones of Cardiff University's Governance Centre and co-author of the report said, attempts to champion a single version of Britishness to buttress what some have termed the precious union are not only doomed to failure but are likely to be self-defeating doomed to failure, Madam Deputy Speaker, a phrase that could be applied to so many of this government's endeavours, Brexit, HS2, numerous defence projects such as the Ajax tanks debacle, I could go on, but they never listen, they never learn, Madam Deputy Speaker. So it might also help the leader to read an article by the respected BBC financial journalist Paul Lewis of the Moneybox, uh, Moneybox programme, who recently wrote, and I am quoting him, I once coined the acronym TABUS, Things are better in Scotland as a shorthand for the forward-looking social <coughs> policies of that country. And it gets truer all the time. So once again, Madam Deputy Speaker, isn't it time for a debate, even in the dog days of this government, to look at Scotland and learn how, as Paul Lewis said, to do things better? Here, here. Here, perhaps. Well, I thank the Honourable Lady for her question. And I have always advertised the differences that there are uh, across the nations of the United Kingdom and uh, regional differences uh, in England as one of the strengths of the Union as well as the things that we have in common. Um, she accuses me of uh, uh, talking Scotland down and uh, not celebrating it. Co au contraire, and if she looks back at the speeches I've made to this from this dispatch box, you will know that is not the case. I'm not talking Scotland down. I'm talking about the SNP running Scotland down. And I'm very happy to compare uh, our record uh, of stewardship of public services against the SNP's. Uh, not a week goes by without the SNP messing up uh, some particular sector or service. This week, uh, highlights include the SNP pressing ahead with short-term let's licensing, which will, on the 1st of October, see thousands of businesses potentially close in Scotland and put some people in jeopardy of losing their homes, clobbering Scotland's tourist sector too. It has also emerged this week that complaints about SNP-administered benefits have increased by 350%. And while the economy recovers and people are still having to tighten their belts, uh, they think it's a brilliant idea to introduce a congestion charge. Scotland deserves better than socialist separatist parties. And yet again, uh, the Honourable Lady has demonstrated that the SNP are yesterday's people talking about yesterday's grievances. They are yesterday's party.